call of the Board of Selectmen regular meeting of September 24th, 2018 for order. Roll call, Kathy Tendridge. Madeline Crisidlo. Virginia San Pietro. Kathy Buick. Item number three is to approve the meeting minutes from September 10th and September 20th. Um, did you have the opportunity to review and are there any questions on the meeting minutes? No. Now, September 20th, I was in That's right. Yes. 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 So yes. I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from September 10th and 20th. And is there a second? Um, I'll second. Motion accepted. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to approve the meeting minutes from September 10th and September 20th of 2018. Item number four is old business. We have no old business. Item number five is new business to consider an act on tax refunds totaling $1,367.65 from the tax collector as follow, follows. Alley Financial, $33.46. Michael and Shana Burnett, $6.91. Financial Services Vehicle Trust, $864.24. Francis and Sandra Gatton, $19.18. Han Oil Trust, $424.07. Gerard and Tammy Moe, $9.08. And Christopher and Carolyn Scarro, ten dollars and seventy-one cents for a total of one thousand three hundred and sixty-seven dollars and sixty-five cents. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve those tax refunds as read. I'll second them. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to consider an act on the tax refunds totaling $1,367.65 from the tax collector. Item number two is to consider an act on line item transfer for an employee promotion and salary adjustment. So as of July 24th, 2018, we had our zoning enforcement officer go to assistant town planner and zoning and wetlands officer. So his increase for the yearly amount will be $5,460. And we need to make a line item transfer from account 106101-34 department head for the of an amount of $3,928, and then from Department 10, 6270-42, contingency for $1,532, for a total of $5,460 transferring into the salary amount, planning and zoning of 10, 6102-34. The new salary will be so his new rate for the year will be forty nine thousand seven hundred and forty dollars and sixty cents. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the transfers as outlined, and the new rate of uh, the new salary rate will be forty nine thousand seven forty and 60 cents for our department head. Oh, well, is now the department or? head, he is going to assistant town planner assistant. and zoning and wetland okay. officer. Assistant town planner and zoning and wetlands officer. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carry to transfer $3,928 from account number 10-6101-34 and $1,532 from 10-6270-42 contingency to salaries P and Z 10-6102-34 in the amount of $5,460. Item 
item number three is discussion of I Park lot sale. So at this time, we would need a motion to go into executive session. Um, I'll make a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing the sale of an I Park lot. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to go into executive session at 7.05 p.m. So at this time, I would need a motion to come out of executive session at 7.14 p.m. with no action taken. I'll make a motion to come out of executive session at 7.14 with no action taken. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to come out of executive session at 7.14 p.m. With no action taken. Item number six is correspondence. We don't have any correspondence for this meeting. Item number seven is other. We have no other um, for our meeting tonight. So we'll go into um, public comment. So if we have any public comment, we'll accept comment at this time. And if you do have comment, just please state your name. My name is Amy Martin. And where are you from? I live on the Lori Drive in Plainfield. I've lived there for about 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote something. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's kind of more relevant to this commissioner's meeting tomorrow, but I, I believe that um, the crisis starts with public awareness and education, and those are the things that possibly you could help with by subpoenaing, uh, asking the senator for money for funding to start with our children. Um, I'm just going to read it. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm here to discuss the opioid crisis in our community, specifically that the Plainfield Police does not administer or carry Narcan through the liability that it may present. Liability associated with this changed under the Good Samaritan revision in 2017. As our police officers who have taken an oath to protect and serve, why not is my question. A lack of action on their part tells me as a community they don't care. Why not use a drug when it is 98% effective if used appropriately? Minutes are critical when a person is overdosed and is not breathing. Waiting for EMS may be too late. Furthermore, why not have it for, for their own safety to protect themselves and their fellow officers from substances that they don't know about during a routine traffic stop that could potentially harm them? Fentanyl now has been laced in heroin found in most um, drug seizes that's trickling down from Pennsylvania. Um, it's a hundred times more powerful than heroin ever was. The synthetic form is even worse. Um, statistics show last year over 1,000 people died in Connecticut. Eight this year alone in Plainfield, Moose Up, and Plainfield jurisdictions. That means eight mothers and fathers lost their child. Countless siblings lost their brother or sister. And an unknown number of children have lost their parents. You may even know someone who's been affected by drugs in some way. When is it enough? I believe it starts with educating our children and creating public awareness. The need to speak up when you see something, say something. All of us in the community, first responders, community leaders, law enforcement, must work together to fight this. Implement programs that help educate our children. Maybe you could catch the criminals did a long time ago in the D.A.R.E. programs in our community. Um, in speaking with Chris Murphy, our state senator, he tells me that there's $3.3 billion that he has allocated from the federal government to help in this crisis. I believe you as our community lead leaders can help with this by creating community awareness and programs that can help our youth and help the community deal with this crisis alone. It starts here at our town level. Many people don't know and they're ignorant to uh, the, the stereotypes of addiction. Addiction does not discriminate, so why should we? And that is all. So one thing I just want to share with you, I don't know if you've heard of Matt's mission before. Um, 
it's a program and that's exactly what it's for. We have already met with them and we, um, we, the police department was here. Well, the Manic Police has already got that program in place and we meet again on October 4th, that's just excellent. so you know. That's so excellent. we are, we are working on it, okay? So thank you for being here tonight. I know mm -hmm. how difficult that is, and I know how difficult it is if you fall someone. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Is there any other public comment tonight? Any other public comment? If there's no other public comment, I would take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried to adjourn our meeting at 7.19 p.m.